Hi, I'm Barbara Pettit, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to place a urinary bladder catheter. This video will cover the indications, contraindications, supplies you'll need to place the catheter, how to prepare the patient, how to place the catheter while maintaining sterile technique, securing the catheter, as well as some troubleshooting and complications that can arise. You should already be aware of the relevant anatomy and have a basic understanding of the indications and contraindications. Speaking of which, indications for indwelling catheters include the need to precisely monitor urinary output, relief of urinary retention, a neurogenic bladder, patients who are immobilized or incontinent, including patients that are not conscious and intraoperative patients, and after urethral surgery. Non-indwelling or straight catheters can be used for retrograde bladder irrigation, obtaining sterile urine samples, such as in children who are too young to produce a clean catch sample, or to administer contrast for certain radiologic studies. Of course, there are other indications, but these are many of the most common reasons. Contraindications for placement of a urinary catheter include a history of urethral stricture, a urethral trauma, which you should suspect in patients with a high riding prostate on rectal exam, blood at the urethral meatus, or perineal or scrotal hematoma or ecchymosis. Relative contraindications include patients with acute urinary tract infections and anticoagulated patients. Catheter-associated urinary tract infections, or CAUTIs, are a huge source of nosocomial infection and medical spending, so always think carefully if your patient truly needs an indwelling bladder catheter. I've talked about both indwelling and non-indwelling catheters, so it's probably a good time to talk about that a little more. Indwelling catheters, such as this one, are placed under sterile conditions and have a balloon at the end to ensure that they stay inside the bladder. They're used when the patient will need catheterization for several days. The most common type of indwelling catheter is a Foley catheter like this one. It comes in various sizes measured using the French system. On the internal end, it has a balloon to ensure that it stays in place. On the external end, it has two branches. One drains the urine into the collection system. It's connected to some tubing and then to usually a bag, while the other is used to fill the balloon with sterile water. We would put it in here like this and blow up the balloon. Be sure to check the number on the ring at the end of the catheter because that will tell you how much volume to use when filling the balloon. Other forms of indwelling catheters also exist. The coude catheter is a catheter with a bulbous tip and a curved end, and it's used for patients who have urethral obstructions, such as from benign prostatic hypertrophy. It's placed using a bit of pressure, but the principle of placing it is the same. It has a balloon and it's indwelling. The other type of catheter is a non-indwelling or straight catheter. These are used when the patient only has to be catheterized once. They are still placed under sterile technique, but they don't stay in the body after the bladder is drained. They are not connected to a collection system, but instead drain directly into a basin. Many people self-catheterize at home using a straight catheter. When you determine that your patient needs a bladder catheter, talk to the patient explaining why they need it what will happen during the placement, and talk about risks, alternatives, and answer any questions that they may have. Inquire about allergies to latex or iodine, as many kits come with parts that contain these chemicals. Ask the patient if they have ever had a previous catheter inserted, and if there was any difficulty with the insertion. Let's briefly talk about the supplies you'll need for placement. Most institutions use commercially available catheter insertion kits that contain all the necessary items you'll need for catheter insertion. In that case, all you'll need to do is look on the outside of the box and choose the appropriate size catheter for your patient. 16 or 18 French is typical in an adult. Let's look at a kit that contains everything you'll need. Sometimes the catheter is packaged separately, as with this kit, so make sure you're choosing the right kit. In addition to the catheter, you'll need cleaning towelettes or soapy water, non-sterile gloves, absorbable pads, sterile gloves, a fenestrated drape, 
betadine or iodine with applicators for preparing the patient, lubricant, a sterile syringe with water or saline, and a collection system. In this video, we will be focusing on placement in a patient with a penis. Positioning is key for this procedure. Place the patient in the supine position with their legs extended. Place a waterproof or absorbent pad under their buttocks and upper legs. Ensure privacy for the patient. Pull the curtain and expose only the necessary parts of the body. Sanitize your hands and put on non-sterile gloves. This first part is not sterile. Cleanse the penis with towelettes or with soap and water, making sure to retract the foreskin if present. Note to self, if you do this at the end of the procedure, you must return the foreskin to normal position in order to avoid iatrogenic paraphimosis, which is a urologic emergency. Now that the penis is washed, it's time to move to the sterile portion of the procedure. Open the kit to set up your sterile field near the patient. Make sure to place the sterile field in an easy to reach location that ergonomically works for you. You will be doing most of the work with your dominant hand, so that should be the side closer to the field. An easy place to put it is on the patient, just next to the sterile field. Place the large square drape across the thighs and under the penis. Now, don your sterile gloves, like so, making sure you have nothing below your elbows, such as a watch or ring. Open the fenestrated drape and place it on the patient. Tear open the iodine and pour it into the well in the tray. Lift the top tray out and place it in the sterile field in front of the rest of the box containing the actual catheter and tubing. While it used to be commonplace to check the balloon by instilling it with the provided saline, the manufacturer and most institutions no longer recommend this step, so check with your institution to determine their policy. Next, open the syringe with the sterile water as well as the syringe with the lubricant. Hold the shaft of the penis in your non-dominant hand, retracting the foreskin if it is there. If you are using your left hand to place the catheter, stand on the patient's left side. Your non-dominant hand is now contaminated and cannot assist in placement until the catheter is in place and the balloon is inflated. Pull up on the penis. If your grip is not tight enough, placement will be difficult and can lead to unsterile placement. Using three cotton balls, prepare the glands from the meatus towards the shaft in a circular motion. 2% lidocaine jelly can be injected directly into the lumen of the urethra via syringe and squirt the rest of the lubricant onto the sterile field. Place the tip of the catheter into the lubricant and attach the syringe to the appropriate port. Holding the penis at a 90 degree angle to the abdomen, grasp the pre-lubricated catheter and insert the tip into the meatus. Make sure you hold the catheter far enough away from the tip to not contaminate your dominant hand on the penis, but not so far away that you cannot control the tip of the catheter. When placing bladder catheters in patients with a penis, advance the catheter all the way to the hub, regardless if urine is spilling the tubing or not. Once at the hub, instill the correct volume of saline into the balloon and gently pull back on the catheter until resistance is met. Once you meet resistance, Readvance the catheter so the balloon is not putting pressure on the bladder neck. If the patient has a foreskin, retract it back over the glands at this point. Remove the drape. Now it's time to secure the catheter. Many kits come with a stabilization device. Usually this device has a mechanism to lock the catheter in a single orientation, an adhesive on the other side to secure it to the patient. So, like this. If there's no stabilization device provided, use two pieces of tape to secure the tubing to the patient. The first piece of tape goes directly on the patient's leg, under the tubing. The second piece of tape goes over the first, around, and is taped to itself 
before it's taped down. This provides a mesentery that provides a lot of stability for the tube. Whether using tape or a commercial stabilization device, leave enough slack in the catheter and tubing so there's no tension on the bladder neck. Technically, the correct orientation is to secure the tubing so that the penis is cephalad and the tubing is taped to the abdomen. However, many people choose instead to secure the device to the patient's leg. If the patient is immobilized or unable to move, this can lead to ulcers, but it is acceptable in an otherwise healthy patient who will not need the catheter for more than 72 hours or so. Regardless of how you secure the tubing, it is crucial to ensure that there is no tension on the tubing. The tubing can then be clipped to the sheets or the patient's gown. The bag should be placed in a dependent position and may be uh, hung by the string or the hanger above the bag. Let's talk about errors and complications. By far the most common error is a break in sterile technique. Once your non-dominant hand touches the skin, it's contaminated and cannot touch any of the tubing or the catheter. Likewise, your dominant hand must stay sterile and not touch the penis or vulva or outside the sterile field. Another common complication is urethral trauma secondary to insufficient lubrication leading to pain on insertion. If urine leaks around the catheter, gently tug it to see if the balloon is inflated. If it is, you may need to replace the catheter with a larger French size. If no urine drains, ensure the catheter is fully inserted, deflate and reinflate the balloon when you are sure you're in the bladder, and gently press on the bladder. If you place the catheter and get return of frank blood, it is likely either misplacement of the catheter, traumatic placement, or attempted removal before the balloon is deflated. It can also be from infection, posturinary tract surgery, stones, trauma to the urethra or pelvis, or cancer in the GU tract. In this case, ensure correct placement, order a CBC and urinalysis, and make sure that an IV is in place, and consider making sure that blood is available. In the setting of trauma to the pelvis, bladder, or urethra, consider a retrograde cystourethrogram. If you're pre-rounding on your patients and find a previously functioning catheter is no longer working, check the catheter placement by pulling back gently until resistance is met. Make sure none of the catheter tubing is kinked, clamped, or dislodged. Seriously, this is the most common cause of loss of function and the easiest to fix. If it's not a problem with the tubing, consider blood clots, urinary sediment, and stones. If the catheter is no longer draining, palpate the abdomen to check for bladder distension. Check with your resident or attending to see if they want you to irrigate the catheter using sterile technique. If all else fails, it may be necessary to replace the catheter. However, check with your resident or attending before doing so. So there you have it, the indications, contraindications, and some troubleshooting of urinary catheters. We talked about the supplies you'll need and how to maintain sterile technique while placing the catheter. Some advice? Ask someone if you can open a kit before you have to place one. That way you can familiarize yourself with the kits at your institution and be ready to place a Foley without confusion when the time comes. Ask nurses to let you place a Foley catheter whenever you can. There is only one way to get good at doing it and that is with practice. Most nurses will be happy to help and will stay with you to make sure you don't run into trouble. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thanks, and be sure to watch the video on bladder catheterization in patients with a vulva as well. Have a good day.